a king of Turkey, got a distance Outside the box, not afraid to be different Listen, it's well done, going long, trying to be rich I work based out Alright, we have given you guys a ton of different moves for all aspects of the game. Strikers, midfielders, nutmegs, freestyle moves, body feints, even moves for defenders once they recover the ball. So what we got for you today is all of that mashed into one so you guys can go take these immediately, bite size, and go straight to the field, practice, and then ball. Of course, body feints have been around since the beginning of time. Thanks to Messi, however, it's become more popular and more and more guys want to be able to include it in their game. Now, there are a million different situations where this can be useful, and if you understand the principles, it will become instinctual and you can ball out. Number one, momentum. The more speed you have built up before you meet the defender, the easier the feint will be. Building up speed before beating players one-on-one -on -one is a no-brainer. It gives them less time to adjust to your movement. Now, you don't need to be running at a full sprint, but what you need is a change of pace. The feint and action must be fluid and quick. Drop your shoulder, lean away, and explode. Whether there's one or two defenders, the same thing applies. If you can set yourself up at a diagonal angle, instead of straight on, it'll also give you a slight advantage. If you can get this one down, it will work like crazy. It's only three or four steps, so it's not too complicated, but you got to do it right. Place your foot on the ball, drag it quickly, let it hit the side of your foot, put your foot quickly on the ground so the defender thinks he has a chance to rush in, and then push off and tap the ball through his legs. Go check him out and see how lethal this is at a high level. Maria surprise. If you miss my boy on hell, pull this off and then go on to straighten up make the next defender, then you're missing out. Two quick things to notice when you're going for this. Number one, the defender has to be putting pressure on you as you act as if you're moving away or as if you're not interested in turning to face them. If they're standing, you can just about forget it. Number two, your feet better be coordinated and fast. And if you want to train them, then just click on the link below from our 21 day train challenge and you will have feet fast in no time. Now onto the roll. It might be a little awkward for you at first, but you need to remember to lure them in and then gain just enough space to swing the ball backwards. A little trick is to open up your body to the side as much as you can when rolling the ball through. Yes, you can make it easier by just turning and tapping, but it won't look as dope. It's not too complicated, which is why it's up first, so let's get into some more craziness. Go! 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 Call this move, good luck, not getting smashed because if you can pull this off without getting crushed then you sir or ma'am are a badass nonetheless if you want to give it a go make sure once again to have plenty of space and then roll your foot over the ball and stop it for a stall roll it back out in front of you on the protected side and flick it up with your toe now if you want this to work the most important part is to turn and do the heel flick in one motion otherwise it'll be too choppy and the defender can see it coming so please comment below if you've ever been able to pull off a move as crazy as this one now this one could be used anywhere, but it's most effective when headed towards goal. As an attacking player, you will find yourself in this position all the time. Sprinting towards goal with a defender that just might catch up to you. And it's worth having a few tricks to know what to do. And here, we throw a solid chop that cuts us back and stops all the forward momentum. But rather than continue going that way, we look to go back and do a scoop turn to get by. It of course doesn't have to be a comma, but what you need to remember is that you've got to give the defender just a second to start throwing his energy back at you. If we're too quick, we mess up the surprise. And it may seem counterintuitive to beat someone twice, but just outside the box, this is the type of trick and move that is going to get you enough space to put the ball away, and that is all you need. Strikers, listen up. This move will do everything you need. A quick, fast move that gives you just enough space to shoot. You can't ask for more, especially considering you can do the move from a completely standing position. A staple in Pele's game, the best way to do this is to master the Pele chop from the first move and build onto something like this. Boom, boom, and you're gone. Snap down with your foot, and before it goes fully across your body, send it back from where you started by tapping it out, and then push to sprint out. You don't need a lot of space for this, which is why it's so useful. There are variations of this, which we'll go over in another video, but for now, grab five to 10 balls and try incorporating this into a shooting drill to get the most out of your training. Take a touch inside, step over the ball, make sure to drop your shoulders and sell the fake, and then explode and push to get out. The second step is most important, so when you do your step over, make it quick and it should work. 
this move is so sick, we probably shouldn't be allowed to show it. But in any case, some of you guys will recognize the beginning from a move that I love from the original Ronaldo. Neymar's added a twist by putting in a step over and then accelerating to get away. So from a virtually still position, step over the ball and with the back foot, tap it to roll the ball in the same direction that you were heading. And instead of a body feint here, throw in a step over and push off to get off a shot or do whatever you want. Do the step over as soon as the ball is caught up to you. Once again, it has to be one continuous motion to work perfectly. This is the perfect move for just outside the box. And as we always say, guys, train like crazy if you want to be able to use these moves. And if you're looking for a training program for free, check out our 21 day training program right here on YouTube and then go outside and start destroying defenders like crazy. <laughs> For most moves to work, you need to be fluid, and that's especially true here, where your feet and body are gonna be temporarily headed in different directions. The move will work a million times better if you're moving at an angle rather than straight on, so look to prepare like that. When you drag the ball with the inside of your foot, you've gotta really throw your hips to sell the step over. It's a move where you're gonna to wanna to generate a lot of speed before you execute. If you're stiff, it won't work. If you're slow, it won't work. So notice that sometimes I turn my body completely in the opposite direction. Figure out what fits your style and then train, train, train. Don't expect to blow by the defender each time. You might sometimes, but at the very least, if you do this right, you're going to create some space. This is the perfect move for a fullback. Marcelo has this down to a science exactly like Roberto Carlos did. Most attacking players don't want to chase too much. If they can block the ball in their half, it's great for their team. When you act as if a long clearance or pass is coming and then chop the ball into the space right in front of you, you take off all the pressure. If you want to be extra safe, you can even do the cut behind you, keeping the ball protected at all times. There's a right time to clear the ball and there's a right time to try this. So make sure you create the illusion of a clearance by knocking the ball well out in front of you if you can. With both of you running to reach the ball, it makes your escape way cleaner when you fake the clearance. Stop on a dime and get out of pressure like a boss. Kicking it off with a move that can be used anywhere, in the middle of the field or in front of goal. Ronnie pulled this move off in the last few seconds of a Champions League game against AC Milan and then smashed it into the goal. The key to this move here is timing and that snapping action that's going to start your acceleration away from the defender. It can be done from a standing position, but as you test it out, it's best to get it going while on the run. So with the ball moving out at an angle from you, you've got to slow your steps down and snap the ball away from the defender just as you feel him coming to pressure. Your snap has to be a big one or the defender's going to recover. And don't just use your foot, throw your whole body into the motion. You're slightly telegraphing the move, but if you snap hard, it will give you just enough time and space to smack it into the goal. We got a whole entire video devoted to this move right here, but Ronaldo was so lethal with this that we had to include it. To go more in depth, check out the link in the description box, but for now, just remember that you can't stand straight up to pull this off. You get a little low, and don't forget that the most effective snakes generally don't leave your foot. It's more like one long, continuous touch. Ronaldo did something very smart with his snake, which was to roll the ball slightly forward just before doing it. The ball tends to stay more glued to your foot if it's moving forward slightly, so if you want a simple way to improve your elastico, make sure to try this because it will definitely help. The Ronaldo chop is probably one of Ronaldo's most recognizable moves, and it makes this list because it's actually simple and effective. Whether you're on the wing or headed out towards goal, this is the type of move that will guarantee you a bit of space when done right. There's no need to complicate this. The faster you and the defender are running, the more effective this move becomes. And if they're flying in to catch up to a loose ball, even better. To make the move as effective as possible, you're going to want to jump and be airborne for a split second and make sure that the chop comes from a bit further back on the heel rather than the toe like the Cruyff, and you'll be all good. And now we've arrived at the point where Neymar is getting crazy with it. And you guys may have seen this move because he pulled it off way back at Santos. And in this game, he went for it and didn't quite get it to work. But it's in here because we want to remind you guys of how important it is to be creative and imaginative and to every once in a while, try things that seem just out of your reach. So start it off with a little JJ Okocha, roll the ball inside and step over it. And at the last second, swing that foot back around and cut it with a Rabona. You can, of course, try to nutmeg the defender, but it may be easier to try and just get the ball past them. Regardless, the most important thing thing and the theme for today's video is to learn to be fluid with your moves. All of Neymar's movements and motions flow together and if you want any hope of pulling these off, you gotta understand this. It's very unexpected and sometimes the only way out of a situation is to send the ball one way while you run the other. In principle, many of you know the move, but if we break down Ronaldinho's style a bit more, we see that he does a few things really well that allow him to pull this off. 
first. When flicking the ball, we flick it using the top part of the foot, nearly the toe. But that comes second to this point here, which is to catch the ball right as it's coming up off the ground. That's gonna give you a nice bit of momentum. Obviously, don't try to flick the ball too high, but if the ball's on a slight bounce, you've gotta know that you can get to it with the defender coming behind you, flick it up, turn, and finish. It's gotta be fluid, it's gotta be quick, but if you know the pressure's coming, then you gotta know that you can pull this off. Now we can get a little flashy with things, and plenty of players do this move, but for wingers, you're going to find yourself in position to use this more than anyone else. Has it's pulled off plenty of sick nutmegs, but we like this one because it's simple and effective. No move's going to work 100% of the time, but there are situations where you've got a higher chance of success. Faking a cross with a defender in tight is a great opportunity to go for a meg. If you're in the attacking half, then it might be well worth the risk. Cut the Rabona back from where you came from, and once you reach back up to the ball, you can go for the meg. Slowed down, you can see that we make a quick transition transition to our other foot after the Rabona so that we can get set up to go around the defender. Don't worry about missing a few. As an attacking player, it's more important to gain the confidence to express yourself on the field rather than worry about your mistakes. Call this move whatever you want. Just know that it is not a normal Cruyff. Neymar and Eden Hazard do this very, very well. And it's because they understand that they can put the defender in very big trouble by making them overcommit. Watch as we look in front of us with the intention of making them look to cut us off. We don't really care about the space in front of us. The defender can close that down. What we want is to get behind them. The second they think they've got us, we Cruyff, but we do it in a way that makes us bounce and push off. Check the examples here. It's not just about pulling the move and running away. Cruyff and bounce or hop back into balance. Doing this gives you an extra second on your defender and it will undoubtedly lead to more open space for you. This is the type of feint you just need to be aware of because there'll be opportunities for you to use it all over the field. It's worth knowing because it can keep you from getting smashed or it can open up just enough space for you to get off a shot. It's perfect for a ball that's practically a 50-50. And I say practically because you need to know that you'll be first to the ball, at least by a little bit. If not, the defender can body you off the ball or simply just take it. Now, whether the ball's coming from the side or in between you guys, you need the defender to think you're gonna run right in front of him. At the last second, however, all you gotta do is open up your hips and body and go into the space that you just created. You're not always gonna beat him outright, but if you throw yourself forward with purpose, you'll get them to flinch, and that's all the time you need to put the ball away. Ronaldo did his step overs with a few little touches and then an incredibly quick and sharp step over and explosion. If he was running too fast, it would give it away. The surprise is one of the most undervalued elements of this move. But when we're talking about double or multiple step overs, it's more important that you build up enough speed and make sure that the ball is still rolling forward as you do them. You don't even need to know how many you're gonna do as long as you sell them by getting your entire body into it just like he would. Just know that whenever you're about to stop, you've got to sprint out. The step overs are putting the defender on his back foot. If you accelerate out, you'll win the first step and gain some space. Well, this move for the most part appears to be flashy. It's entirely practical. And just like the goal Matthews Matthews from our top five moves for strikers video, it's a type of move that creates something from literally nothing. The first point that I want to get across is that when you're looking to pop the ball up, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, it'd be great if it went right over the defender's head, but if it goes to the side or around him, then we're all good. At the very least, put it around or above their hip area because it's very hard to defend. Watch how I open and turn my body before the flick up. It'll be way easier than standing flat footed. The pop comes from the momentum of the ball. A very soft pass isn't ideal for this move. You need to check away and move towards the ball with the defender right on you or moving quickly to close you down. Don't force it up. Guide it up with your toe. You don't actually have to put much force into it. This is a tough move to teach because a lot goes on intuition and that you have to develop on your own. We want you guys to start to feel the flow and the only way to do that is to start trying things outside of your comfort zone. So get after it. Expect to see the beginning of this move all over the World Cup this summer. It's become the go-to move for a lot of players and you can use it alone with absolutely no problem. But what it actually sets up is a mini trap for the defender to reach in. And that's the principle behind all nutmegs. It's all just one big show to distract them from your main goal, which is to get around them. With the defender in tight, roll the ball and then croif it behind you a little bit away from you and then shift your body to the side in order to tap it through the defender's legs and get on your way. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you you guys get the first part down. Practicing it 10 to 20 reps to the left and right will give you the confidence to do the move naturally and fluidly. This is just as effective in the middle of the field as it is on the wing, so be prepared and when you recognize the situation, go for it and throw the pen.
Goal! This is the type of move that's gonna set you up for literally more flashy moves. So you gotta get your feet ready. Roll the ball and step over it at the same time and then quickly stop the ball in Rabona position and get your feet set again because that is just the beginning. Now you've gotta look to be creative to get out. Whether that means another step over, or a quick touch into space, this is the moment where you've gotta show some quality. Try doing the first part without even knowing where you're gonna go with it. Let the game come to you and learn to start reading the game in a way that'll help you adapt in different situations. Normally we keep the Cruyff close to us, but the Hazard Cruyff works on momentum. So to make that happen, we have to explode out to one side to get the defender to come with us. Without that, you can forget about this move. Once you know they're rushing to catch up, we can pull the Cruyff back into the space that we came. Exaggerate the touch and push the ball out further than you normally would, but be prepared to stop. If you have slow footwork, then you won't be able to capitalize and get out. As we slow it down for you, you can see that as I sprint out, I line up for what looks like a shot or a cross, but instead of a cut in front, we Cruyff and throw our weight back the other way as fast as possible. It should give you just enough time to get off a pass or put the ball away. Moves like this are simple but effective. Flicking the ball up in the air like this is the best way to get out a little tight area. It's incredibly hard for defenders to knock the ball down when it gets into this space. So lure them in by pulling the ball in towards you and flick the ball up to get around an incoming tackle. The beauty of this is that it doesn't need to be done at top speed. If you can perfect the movement and trust that the ball is gonna get flicked up, then you can save yourself. These are the type of moves that you have to train alone. Take the ball out and repeat the motion over and over again. And when games and training roll around, you'll find that you look to do the move without having to think about it. Technique is the foundation of all great players, so no shortcuts, get after it. Sometimes the simple movements can be the most deadly. Oh, these moves won't work in a game. Nobody does this in a game. Only Neymar can do it in a game. Shut up. Don't put your lack of imagination onto the rest of us. If you want to pull off a complex move in a game, then practice. Train until it becomes second nature and then execute when the time is right. There are no rules and the more creative you look to be, the better you grow as a player. The rainbow can be done in a number of ways. Neymar likes to flick his up with two feet. I roll mine up the leg and flick it with the heel. Whatever works best for you. These videos aren't about copying a trick. They're about expanding your knowledge and growing technically. One of the keys to making this work is to not give away what you're doing. The move is very easy to defend if you know what's gonna happen. So when looking to pull it off, stand as nonchalantly as possible and go for it. It's usually so surprising that it doesn't even need to get over the defender's head. To the side or over the shoulder might be enough to make it happen. Go out and practice this like crazy and after a bunch of repetitions, cross your fingers and go for it in the game. Bueno, pues eso ha sido todo por hoy. No olviden dejarnos un comentario aquí abajo, dejarnos un like, suscribirte a nuestro canal y nos vemos en un próximo video, ¿ok? Que estén muy bien. Hasta luego. Yo, Remy, paso la